Right now, I want to talk markets with Mimi Duff. She is managing director at Gen Trust. And Malcolm Etheridge, who is executive vice president at CIC Wealth Management. Mimi, let's start with you. We are in the midst of earnings season. This is a really big earnings week. And you're pretty convinced that it's going to get a lot tougher for companies to put up good numbers this, this year, this season. Yeah, I think it's fair to say last year, companies were able to pass along the price increases that we saw and then some. And this year, we think those companies are going to be a bit more under pressure. We're seeing some layoffs. We saw a big electric car maker cut, um, cut prices. So we do see some pressure points. And that's going to be what we're watching most uh, closely, the margins. Hey, Malcolm, that, that's a story that I thought had been pretty well baked into the market. But we've seen some pretty decent gains in, in the major averages since then. It, it, is this a situation where this news is baked in or is this a situation where people are even looking past that to think that the Fed is going to be a little easier and that's more important? Well, I think it depends on what sector you're looking at. I think uh, to Mimi's point, we haven't really seen wage inflation baked into the numbers the way that we know it has to be there. If you just think about retailers, for example, who don't really have a ton of pricing power anymore now like they did the last two, maybe three years, they're having to bring down prices to get you and I to come back into the stores to shop. At the same time, their workers are still demanding a little bit more and a little bit more in their take-home pay every month. And so those margins will definitely get compressed that retailers are going to be announcing in those earnings numbers throughout this entire year. So I really anticipate in the retail sector specifically, wage inflation is going to play a big role in there. But if you look at something like software services where there's a lot more operating leverage, they don't care as much about how much it costs to put another worker in a seat uh, it, one by one. In aggregate, in aggregate, obviously, they care because they're laying off workers. But in, he in, in healthcare, software, places like that, I think that we still see some pretty significant gains because they have a decent amount of operating leverage as well as pricing power. And, and these layoffs play into that as well. It's very sad headlines to hear for the people who are involved. But you think as a shareholder, that's something um, you should be embracing? Well, I don't know that I would say you should be embracing it. I think we aren't giving these layoffs as much due as they actually deserve. Uh, right now, folks are saying, oh, well, that's just in the tech sector. It's a white collar layoff. It doesn't really matter as much. But the reality is these are still hundreds of thousands of jobs. Uh, Layoffs.fyi, I think the number is 150,000 or so that they've reported so far uh, since late last, uh, since late 2021. And those layoffs could spill over into other sectors where folks aren't as easily hireable, where folks aren't getting these generous severance packages. And so I don't think we should be so willing to just brush it off and say, oh, poor tech worker who makes several hundred thousands of dollars, uh, because it could also come you know, beyond the, the finance sector, beyond the healthcare sector, where the other higher paying jobs are. Yeah, Mimi, I, I think you've done some work just looking at inflation numbers. And, and while we like to think inflation has peaked and maybe we were worse, through the worst part of it, through the brunt of it, um, you make some points just historically how long it takes to fight inflation once it gets above two and a half percent. Yeah, typically uh, when inflation is coming down from north of five percent, which this is that situation, it takes 48 months to really get inflation back to two percent, the Fed's target. We're 20 months in. So um, while we think that the peak funds rate at five percent sounds just fine to us, the market is pricing in cuts later this year. And I think they might be getting ahead of themselves based on history, at least. It could take some time to really get inflation back to 2% because of some of the structural factors. So maybe down to 3 to 4 is easier. All the way down to 2 could take some time.